Last week, we built the Blood Towers, the beastly ant territories of the Dracula ants. Check out those fruit flies circling like crows outside the towers. But next door to these ant newcomers lays another kingdom of old, of the OG ant trinity that has long been established in the Antiverse. It's an ant kingdom we the AC family call the Hacienda del Dorado, home to the Golden Empire, a mighty super colony of yellow crazy ants. But there has been a great change in the Hacienda del Dorado since we last visited these territories that has tipped the balance within the kingdom. Have a look at this. If you're new here, this is what the feeding grounds used to look like. Today, the crowds of Golden Empire ants have been reduced to only a few seen rummaging through the debris. But what has happened to the once glorious Golden Empire? Well, AC family, what you're seeing here is a great transition that all the inhabitants of the Hacienda del Dorado are undergoing as a result of a single kingdom-shaking event. The disappearance of an emperor and the entrance of a dragon. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ants Canada Ant Channel. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC family. Enjoy. All right, AC family. I know some of you who have been following the channel for a while may be die-hard Golden Empire loyalists or fans of Emperor Sapphire. But if you are, don't panic. I'll explain everything that has happened in detail, so keep on watching until the end. But for you newcomers, who may be wondering what is going on, let me catch you up to speed. This waterfall and pool, called the Golden Springs, were installed for population control, as the less nimble ants would be swept and swallowed up by its falls. And living within its waters was the Golden Empire's resident Kraken, a blue crayfish that we all watched grow up here. We had named it Emperor Sapphire, an awesome and sensitive beast whose main purpose was to feed on decaying ant bodies which fell into the Golden Springs, thereby keeping these waters consistently crystal clear. But now, he's gone. Here's what happened. Months passed and Emperor Sapphire began to grow bigger and bigger slowly outgrowing the Golden Springs. So, I'm sad to announce that it was no longer fair nor healthy to restrict our blue crayfish to the limiting waters of the Golden Springs. And after his latest shed, I had to rehome him, leaving the Golden Springs completely evacuated. His royal absence, however, eventually led to a buildup of algae within the Golden Springs, since there was now no one to take care of cleaning duties and the water grew foul as more and more dead ant bodies collected untouched. But now you may be wondering how this led to the staggering population decline in the Golden Empire. Now you may be thinking the ants drank this foul water and died off in masses, but actually, although the absence of the Sapphire Emperor was indeed the cause of the disappearance in ants, it's not what you're thinking. In fact, the Golden Empire has not been dying out. They're still here in the Hacienda del Dorado, and I'm about to show you where they've all been hiding. It's night, and a gift is about to fall from the skies. It's the Golden Empire's feeding time. At the arrival of the chopped up roaches, a group of ants come boiling out from within their deepest of catacombs to feast on the food offerings that fall from the skies every night. Have a look. Message spreads fast by way of pheromones that food has arrived at the surface, springing more and more ants into action to help with processing the food. More squadrons of ants appear on the scene to carry these massive pieces of fresh roach meat. Look at them cooperating and carrying the roach pieces from all sides as they pull and plan their operations of food transport.
And now suddenly, the feeding grounds are as populated as we're used to seeing them. But AC family, here's where they've been hiding all this time. Within the soils of the terrarium, there is a damp layer. I've been purposely drying out the lands for a reason I'll get into in a bit. But it has caused the ants of the Golden Empire to retreat deep into this layer of moist soil. AC family, check out all those amazing chambers and tunnel work, and all the ants pouring out from their openings. We'll be seeing some special guest appearances later on in the video at this particular cross-section of the nest, so hang tight for that in a little bit. Meanwhile, as for this roach, they'll be working on fitting it into the nest, then disappear again deeper into the moist soil layer. So let's shut the lights and allow these ants to deal with their food in peace. Now I'm sure many of you may be glad to know the Golden Empire is okay, and healthy as usual. But why then have I attempted to dry out the lands to keep the ants deeper underground? And what is the connection to the absence of our Sapphire Emperor? Well, now that the Golden Springs were empty and kind of festering, I had some major renovation plans in mind in order to make these waters great again and set the stage for the reception of our Sapphire Emperor's replacement. That's right, we needed a new cleaner beast for the Golden Springs. So, I needed the ants to stay out of my way as much as possible while this project was in operation. But boy, AC family, did I have some epic plans for these Golden Springs. A new beast was coming to the Antiverse, AC family, and it was unlike anything I've ever kept before. The next evening, when the ants were sparse and retreated out of the way, I went straight to work as quickly as possible, so to not alarm the ants before they came boiling out to defend their kingdom from the giant divine hands descending from the skies. Though these ants don't sting, they are quick to swarm and can spray formic acid into bites they inflict, which cause irritation and lots of escaped ants using my body as a bridge. I disconnected the filter and began to scoop away at the soil. All this substrate needed to go. The beast that would be moving in here would need more room than the Golden Springs was currently offering. Next, I needed to replace the substrate with a layer of black sand. I chose the sand so that our new beast would show up nicely against it. And AC family, after several hours of work and renovations, behold, I'm pleased to present to you the new Hacienda del Dorado. Now before I get to the newly restored and improved Golden Springs, let me show you the awesome changes I made to the lands. The new territories look absolutely gorgeous. I couldn't look away. It was calming to the eyes. Don't you guys think? I've planted groupings of arrowhead plants, Syngonium paraphyllum, and a cute smaller species, which may or may not be creeping wire vine, Mullenbeckia axillaris. I find these plants accent our creeping fig ficus at the back there quite nicely. Another quick thing I wanted to show you guys were these newcomers. These ferns, which I actually didn't plant, sprouted out of nowhere, growing epiphytically without soil with our bromeliads. Pretty neat that they sort of planted themselves, and it's beyond me how they got there. And speaking of making grand appearances on the scene, Guess who else had made a grand comeback to once again frequent the feeding grounds? They're back! So check this out AC family. Now that the new plants have been installed, and with it new moist soils added, as well as more water to help the new plants root properly, the lands were no longer dried out as before. And so the Golden Empire has returned in their great numbers above ground. And let me tell you, Working around their feeding grounds planting the plants was no easy venture. The Golden Empire came pouring out of their nest, covering my arms, biting and spraying me with formic acid. I've never had to work around them like this for such a long time, and for the first time, felt and experienced their wrath. Impressive defense line, I must say. But the thing that impressed me the most during this whole re-landscaping operation was just how many ants emerged on the scene. Have a look at this. Masses of ants scrambling around in hijinks as the colony was made aware of my giant hands ripping and planting around their home. Ants were relocating brood in a panic. I mean, 
wouldn't you? But look who else I caught making moves. A queen. This was one of the eight royal queens to the Golden Empire's super colony. It was awesome to see her again. And then out of nowhere, a second queen. Totally amazing. It was great seeing our monarchs, even if it was in this current state of emergency. And so the Golden Empire was now back to normal and no longer an estivation brought about by the great drought I had caused. But now that the colony was back to frequenting all areas of the Hacienda del Dorado, it was time to add the finishing touch to the Golden Springs. Or should I say, it was time to add the finishing beast to the Golden Springs. The waterfalls were ready and working, with waters cascading down its purifying planted surface. Though I had done an 80% water change, some of the biofilm and sediment from the old substrate had settled on top of our new sand substrate, which was okay because this valuable gunk contained the necessary bacteria needed to neutralize the poisonous waste which would be generated by the beast that would be moving into these waters. I could also see pieces of dead ant remains in the mix. It was definitely important that these waters stay as clean as possible because the Golden Springs happened to be the Golden Empire's primary water source. It's pretty ironic to think that the Golden Springs happens to give the ants life, bring some of them death, and now bring them a new pet dragon that they have no idea is about to enter these waters. And so AC family, it is with great joy and excitement that I am pleased to present to you the Hacienda del Dorado's new resident water beast. Behold, our brand new white aqua dragon, aka an axolotl, scientifically known as Ambistoma mexicanum. Now if this is your first time seeing an axolotl, I'm sure you may think its appearance is as strange as its name, but let me assure you, these creatures are incredible. Although they are commonly known as Mexican walking fish, these creatures are not actually fish at all. They're amphibians, closely related to tiger salamanders. They were originally found living in lakes in Mexico, but sadly are now listed as endangered in the wild due to urbanization, water pollution, and introduction of invasive predators in their natural habitats in Mexico. Luckily, today, they are widely bred within the captive pet trade, and this makes our aqua dragon extra special. Check out those external gills though, and all the blood vessels extending to the surface to absorb oxygen and expel carbon dioxide. They are basically the inverted version of our lungs. Super neat, right? This poor axolotl seems to be sustaining an injury on its tail, which it must have gotten from a tank mate biting it. Now these animals are carnivorous, consuming small prey such as worms, insects, and small fish in the wild. So I had to test and see if it had a taste for yellow crazy ants. So I placed in a dead ant, and it took a quick swipe, but hilariously missed. Oh well, let's hope it gets better at aiming. As you can see, these guys are amazing swimmers and are 100% aquatic animals. And this white aqua dragon of ours appeared eager to move in to his bigger home. I also couldn't wait to add our white aqua dragon to the Golden Springs. But before that, I first needed to drip acclimate the beast so that it would gradually adjust to its new future waters. And soon, the beast was ready for its official release. Here we go, AC family. Are you ready? It is time to release our new white aqua dragon into the Golden Springs for the purpose of feeding on drowned members of the Golden Empire. Here we go. One, two, three. I placed the axolotl in and it instantly hid sitting frozen behind some driftwood. It began to regain its bearings for a bit. I watched wide eyed as it sat there, truly like a dragon waiting beneath the waters. I truly hoped it would do a good job at consuming dead drowned ants. It was so weird to see it living here, because prior to this, I've always been used to looking in and seeing our Sapphire Emperor. It sat silently for a long while, staring at the new strange world above the water, and then it decided to move. An ant came to check out the huge white shape it could see below the waters, but the beast was ready to check out its new home. It swam around the corner and cautiously began to explore the Golden Springs floor. I'm sure it could smell all the dead ants at its feet, but it seemed to not care much for them at the moment. 
I'm sure it could also see all the ants crawling around the other side of the glass. But again, not too interested in them either. It moved to check out the filter, which it could probably feel was making strange mechanical vibrations. And then, what it did next, kind of touched my heart. It was staring out at the vast world of the Hacienda del Dorado, outside the waters. It suddenly occurred to me that this was probably the very first time our axolotl had ever seen plants, soil, wood, and even ants. It stood still, staring for a long time at the beauty beyond. OMG! Were these creatures smart? Then suddenly it began to move, probably hoping to explore the rest of the Hacienda del Dorado. Ah, oh, my heart. It eventually turned around and began to continue mapping the edges of its watery domain. Now it's said that the minimum requirement of an axolotl is 10 gallons, and the Golden Springs, now with most of its substrate removed, was about 10 gallons, more wide than tall. But I surely began to feel guilty keeping it within the said minimum required space. What do you guys think? Anyway, it continued to look around at the world beyond the Golden Springs pool. For now, I was going to let it settle in to its new home, where it would take up the task of feeding on drowned members of the Golden Empire. I watched for one last moment as it retreated towards the back to retire for sleep. The next morning, I came to visit the Hacienda del Dorado and could see our white aqua dragon from a mile away against the dark substrate. And strangely, I believe it also saw me coming. It turned to face me as soon as I walked through the door. Ugh, oh, my heart. Why was I feeling guilty for keeping it in the Golden Springs? I felt like it needed something bigger. Well, the good thing was, the axolotl seemed a lot more settled in now and also appeared to be less stressed and a nicer color. Also, the water had cleared up quite nicely, the black sands now visible. With all that biofilm from the night before, probably settled in our filter and crevices within the waterscape to do its job at neutralizing our axolotl's waste. Now get this, AC family. Another great thing I noticed was its tail had healed nicely overnight. This is actually one of the most amazing features about axolotls. They're super healers. Surprisingly, axolotls don't heal by scarring, but are capable of regenerating entire lost appendages in a period of months. And, in certain cases, more vital structures, like parts of their brains. Isn't that amazing? They also can readily accept transplants from other individuals, including eyes and parts of the brain, restoring these alien organs to full functionality. It's pretty mind-blowing if you think about it. Now, as I watched the axolotl pace around its living space, I wondered if it was perhaps hungry. It was hard to tell if it was eating ants or if it simply didn't have a taste for them. There were no more dead ant bodies along the floor. So could that mean it could have eaten them overnight? But just in case our white aqua dragon was hungry, I decided to give it a housewarming gift anyway. As is our AC tradition, here I had some thawed frozen bloodworms, an apparent axolotl favorite. I dropped some into the Golden Springs and the bloodworms fell straight to the bottom. I instantly knew the axolotl could smell them as suddenly BAM! Some must have floated towards her and she sucked them up into her mouth. 
it began to feed happily on the bloodworms. And when it was done, it moved over to continue ant watching. Speaking of which, the Golden Empire was back with business as usual. Check them out! They were as busy as ever, reconstructing tunnels and ant hills within the new rich soils. And by the way, do you recognize where this new soil came from? 10 points if you can tell where in the comments. Now with all the ants now back to frequenting the Golden Springs, back to traveling their usual trails around the waters, to collect a drink and distribute the waters within their bodies to all members of the colony, there was now an added pressure for our white aqua dragon to fulfill its task as water cleaner, as effectively as our former Sapphire Emperor had during his term in the Golden Springs. Which brings me now to my dilemma, AC family. Here's where I need your help. What should we do? Do you think this axolotl was a good choice for our Golden Springs? Although the axolotl does seem happy, a part of me is starting to doubt this choice for a water beast. Because even if the Golden Springs are the alleged minimum required space, I still get the sense this area is too small. Plus I have yet to actually see if it is eating the dead ants. To be fair, it's only been a few days and I plan on keeping a good eye on our white aqua dragon here, feeding it bloodworms daily. But I'd love to know what you guys think. Should we rehome this axolotl and place it with perhaps another crayfish? If you do think we should give the axolotl a chance in the Golden Springs, what should we name it? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section, AC family. As always, you determine the fate of the inhabitants of the Golden Empire and ultimately, the Antiverse. I love these ants and want what's best for them, including clean drinking water free of the poisons generated by any drowned bodies. The lives of the Golden Empire and this new axolotl lay in your hands. Like a massive ant colony ourselves, I believe collectively we'll be able to make the right choice. It's ant love forever. Alrighty, C family, did you enjoy this week's episode? What do you guys think? Will this axolotl be a passing guest in the Antiverse, or should we keep it? I will be sure to update you on how the axolotl is doing in a future video. So hit the subscribe button and bell icon now, so you can keep updated on the happenings of the Hacienda del Dorado and other ant kingdoms. And hit the like button every single time, including now. If you're new to the channel and want to catch up on all your Ants Canada lore, feel free to binge watch this complete storyline playlist here which traces the origins of all the ant colonies of the ant room, so you can follow their stories and better appreciate how these ant kingdoms came to be and why we love them so much. AC Inner Colony, I have left a hidden cookie for you here if you would just like to watch extended play footage of our new axolotl in the Golden Springs. Talk about a cute gentle giant. And before we proceed to the AC question of the week, I'd like to plug my daily vlogging channel, daily vlogs which have become a full out bird dad channel as I am now raising a baby African Grey Parrot. If you love birds, I'd love for you to meet my new cute little bird. Hope you can subscribe when you're there. And now it's time for the AC question of the week. Last week we asked, name one reason why having a large colony is advantageous in the ant world. Congratulations to Smunstu Stinky Monster, who correctly answered, with a larger colony, the workers are much more efficient at their various tasks, like foraging, keeping the nest clean, and feeding the young. Congratulations, Monster Stinky Monster! You just won a free ebook handbook from our shop. In this week's AC Question of the Week, we ask, what neat special ability does the axolotl possess? Leave your answer in the comment section, and you could also win a free ebook handbook from our shop. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's Ant Love forever.